Hello lords and ladies of the internet, I'm the King of Candor, and today we'll be discussing finding one's voice in writing. Now, this might come as a strange topic, or one that seems so obvious it doesn't need discussing, but it's one I actually found many people struggle with or are unsure of what it means. Now, before we get started, YouTube told me to ask you to like and subscribe. Now, on to writing. First, I'm going to explain what a writing voice is, so we're all on the same page. A writing voice is the feel and unique traits that set your writings apart from others. This covers your prose, how in depth do you describe things, it also refers to how you describe things. Think of the Statue of Liberty for example. I want you to quickly either write down three words or picture three words to describe it. Ready? Go. Got your words? Let's go over some. Impressive, magnificent, welcoming. These are the words that I use to describe it. And through that, you get an image of the glory and beauty from it, and maybe hints of America's past. Now, what if I described it like this? Green with age, intimidating, watchful. These words all describe the statue as well, but these words are more detached and make you feel like the person describing it maybe likes the statue less or what it represents. Neither are wrong, but they give a different feel, which is why your voice in writing matters. Here's a pro tip. All your characters should also be doing this. Describing things differently based on their experiences will help them come to life and give the audience a better understanding of who they are. If your character is afraid of water, they should describe the ocean like a deep dark abyss full of salt and drowned men. See how evocative that is? Things like this will help your writing stand out. Now, back to your own voice. What you choose to describe is also very important. Take this scene. Two characters are riding a horse while talking. The two men rode alongside each other winding through the deep green trees of the forest, following a path that nature has just started to reclaim. Glints of sunlight reflect off their metal armor as a warm breeze blows past them, carrying the notes of songbirds in the distance. The sun's warmth fades as they enter deep into the forest, where the silence becomes deafening. The men look around. The scent of iron crawls into their noses. Blood has been spilt nearby. Now, a different writer would describe this scene like this. This part of the forest was full of life, Birds and bees could be seen and heard all around our protagonists. They rode together on a path that was once well-traveled, but has been forgotten of recent. When they suddenly grow silent, before either man can speak, the fresh scent of blood is carried to their noses. A killing has occurred here. The first author focuses more on experience of being in nature. The author clearly enjoys the outdoors and wants to transport the reader to a place with them, whereas the second author is more focused on events moving the story along quicker and telling it as it happens instead of sitting a full scene. Both of these are valid storytelling perspectives, but each one has a different voice. Another aspect of one's writing voice is inserting your interests into the work. What do I mean by this? I mean talking about your interests in your work. For example, The Lord of the Rings has layers upon layers of languages, and this is because Tolkien was a linguist and loved studying languages. He also enjoyed the European myths and added those myths and myths like it to his storytelling. This is different from someone like George R. R. Martin, who's more of a history buff and wrote his world like a history book, with contradictory accounts and authorial bias added into this as a feature. A simple example I find very endearing is actually from the Skyrim mod called Anduniel's NPCs. The creative voices several of the characters and adds in other characters from mods to hers to make a nice package. The mod author, Anduniel, clearly loves horses, as each character has a specific horse, and when certain characters speak about horses, they go into the detail of horses that far beyond anything I understand. This is great because it helps set her work apart, and is stuck with me as a unique aspect. Now, imagine someone like Gordon Ramsay, a world-famous chef writing a fantasy novel. The symbolism and meaning of the draw of all the food they eat would be fantastic, and the descriptions and new dishes he could invent would just be outstanding. This is also where specific genres like military sci-fi get their backing from. Good luck writing a book there if you don't talk about the functions of weapons and go into detail other sci-fi world can gloss over. Many new authors worry and struggle to find their own voice, fearing their work will sound derivative or too much like other authors. This is actually a feature, not a bug. Your voice and your writing style will be reflected and enhanced by the authors you have read. This can be a good thing, as if you, you start to write, your own style will come out and differences will emerge, but you will still have a similar feeling to other authors so audience members can find you. Do not be afraid to add your own flair to your works. Just remember, not everyone wishes to read that. I don't know any fantasy stories written with the tactical details of military sci-fi, for example. This could be because there's no market for it and no one has both interests, or 
It's a new market ready to be explored and no one has found a niche yet. You won't know until you research and try. So good luck writing and make sure to keep your own voice in mind when doing so. Thank you for watching this far. If you enjoyed the content, I'd appreciate it if you liked and subscribed. I look forward to your candor in the comments below and have a great day.